restoration this week is a Matchbox Series number 32 Jaguar Type E. Um, I've been waiting to do this one. I actually came across this car uh, several months back um, and it was severely overpainted with uh, some type of an oil based paint on top of the original enamel from Lesney and um, I've had a couple of those cars that I, I like over paints because a lot of times I can actually do something with them um, and sometimes they're sa uh, salvageable or, or you know can be restored. Um, ever since I got that car and I started working on it I've been looking for the box and I finally came across the box so I wanted to go ahead um, even though I've already started on the car restoration I do have some before pictures um, and we'll go ahead and we'll do the box restoration and then the assembly on the uh, car restoration. About midway through on the car. Uh, so I have the base here. Um, as you can see, it has been repainted. Um, in this case, uh, for, for this type of a base, um, I didn't want to actually remove these wire wheels, so I just painted these in place and uh, used some masking tape to tape off uh, the wheels to make sure that I didn't get any any overspray in there, uh, muck up the spokes or anything. And then um, after I was done uh, with the airbrush, I actually went through um, on the back side here with a little uh, thinner and cleaned off any of those axles where I had gotten the overspray on the axle itself. So uh, the base actually turned out really nice. Um, this is where I've got the body at right now. Um, this is Tester's Red Metallic, just their straight um, out of the shoot color. Um, I did a couple of matches uh, to it beforehand. Um, here you can see where I popped my little screw off already. Um, and it was so dang close I decided that it didn't really need uh, anything else for, uh, for this restoration. That, the color, the flake, everything was, was just really nice, so I just decided to go with it. Um, I do have another copy of this car, and I know there was some variation in those. Um, this one seems to be a lot lighter red than what this was when I started. But again, you know, looking at the before pictures, you can see it, it is really difficult to tell what the original color was. So, um, not unhappy with the match at, uh, at all for that. Um, that's actually you know, pretty close and really happy with the way that this has turned out so far. Um, I do still need to do some updates on the glass. The glass was complete, um, but it's still pretty scratched. Um, and as you can see, it's got some of the, the overpaint stickiness still in it. Um, so I still need to do a cleanup on that. Um, and my interior plastics actually look like they're in really good shape. Um, so we are really pretty close to being able to do a reassembly um, on the on the car. So we finished up buffing our glass to get that all nice and shiny and clean again. Um, I didn't feel like I had to show it on this video. I showed it on the last video. Um, it's fairly straightforward. I use a little Meguiar's uh, polish, clearing polish, and a uh, soft bristle on my Dremel tool. Um, so get our interior pieces put back together in here. This is actually kind of a tight fit on these. Um, and then I do like to color match my screws. I know different restorers are different schools of thought or methods on that, but 
I like matching them, so I put my screws in before I paint. Uh, that also keeps this end where I've drilled and uh, threaded those, those holes, keeps it all clear, um, prevents any paint from getting down in there and gumming everything up. So now, just time to put together our base and our wheels. And put the, I did have to adjust the back screws slightly shorter than the front because I didn't want to drill through the back of the car. Um, I like to get these snug but not overly tight. Um, these are going into my collection, so these aren't uh, played with cars any longer. Go ahead and get our back screw in as well. That's actually where I get a lot of my uh, restoration candidates from is the, the models that I get that aren't in great shape, I give them to my kids and I let them play with them. Um, remember, these are toys are meant to be played with, right? And I wait till they're really, really far gone. Um, and every time I decide I want to start a restoration, I'll go raid their toy bin or their case and see what I can find. Um, and those are, that's a lot of times where I get my restoration candidates. So um, that completes the Jaguar E Type, um, fully restored from the overpaint. Um, I, I did want to talk about just overpaints in general real quick. Um, this was another model uh, that I have. I got a few of these. This is one of my more uh, near mint condition ones. Uh, this is the later with the black plastic wheels on it. And I really wanted to get a silver plastic wheel. And these, it seems like, are getting a little more difficult to find. Um, whether they come up on Flea Bay or through one of the collector groups, it always seems like they're about 40, 50 bucks. I think I paid uh, about $6, maybe $8 for this model, um, but I want to show you what it looked like when I got it. So the method that I used to remove the overpaint on this is one that I picked up from another toy restorer. Um, his channel is called Toy Poloi, and I will put a link down below so you can check him out. Um, but one of the methods that he uses for removing paint from uh, toys or models is brake fluid. Um, and so I went out and got myself some uh, cheapo, off-brand, you know, O'Reilly's brand, DOT brake fluid. And I actually soaked the models in the brake fluid. That causes that outer paint to kind of break down, uh, come off. Um, and it, it will usually take the decals with it. So on this model, uh, these decals are reproduction, or these were added after I removed all of the overpaint from it. Um, and this is a model I like to call a... Um, preservation rather than a restoration. I'm not going to strip this. I'm not going to repaint it. It's a valuable model. Um, this is the first overpaint that I ever attempted. Um, and I like just kind of the character it was. So I want to preserve it. I brought the decals back. Um, I've touched up some of the, the silver. Um, but all the chip paint and all that, I'm going to leave it just how it is. This is a, a nice survivor piece. Um, and I've got, you know, my other mint examples as well. Um, haven't yet found a box for these, so if anyone has one or has a link to where I might be able to find one, um, I am looking for a box, no matter the condition it's in. We know we can restore them uh, for that model. I also wanted to show you, this is one of my upcoming restorations. Um, so this was in a larger group. Uh, I think I covered it in one of my uh, mailbag videos earlier. Um, I don't always post those the same week that I get them. Uh, I'll do two or three of them at a time and then, uh, you know, wait and just post one a week. So, not sure if this one is aired yet or not, but 
This is a, a pretty bad overpaint. I think whoever had this must have been a Harley fan and wanted their black motorcycle instead of the blue. So we're going to attempt, you can see this one's so gummed up the rear wheel even hardly turns. So we're gonna attempt to remove this overpaint with the, uh, the brake fluid method and see how these come out. Um, you know, worst comes to worst, I know I can always take it apart and do a full restoration on it. Back to our restoration on our box. Um, as you can see, this one's in really rough shape. We've got some wrinkles, some bends. I've got a tear most of the way through this end flap. Um, but I'm mostly complete. Uh, I've got all my inner flaps. I am missing an end flap from this end of the box. So um, I did do a reproduction end flap um, with the method that I outlined in my previous video. So you can see we've got a pretty good color match there. Um, I just put this on my home scanner, um, you know, folded it out flat and scanned the, the good artwork that I had. Um, I did do a little touch up, as you can see, comparing the two um, in Photoshop before I printed out my reproduction piece. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna start with is uh, pressing this box just to see what I'm working with, see how much of this I can solve. Um, again, my standard method, nothing too complicated. I'm just borrowing uh, the Mrs. Uh, clothes iron. Got this set on a uh, medium temperature setting. Um, no steam, I don't, don't need steam to get it to go flat. Um, really just the heat and the weight of the iron. So I like to do it one way and then fold that box, you know, flip it back over the other way um, and do a second pass on the other side as well. I think the first thing I'm gonna tackle is the end flap restoration. So to start, I'm gonna take, this is just my, my scanned box artwork right here. Um, I have had to do some color correction and everything else to get this in, but I'm gonna start out just by cutting out only the section of this that I need. Um, I don't know if there's any interest in access or having access to these scans. Um, if there is, certainly shoot me a private message um, or an email and I will gladly send you a link where you can download them. Um, you'll notice on this one, all I've done, I, I wanted to be very careful, cut across the end of my flap here, but I'm gonna wait to trim up the, the rest of this. Um, for, for the restoration on this, I am gonna use the craft paper method. A um, couple reasons on that. One, if you look at the thickness of the original box versus my reproduction, the reproduction's too thin. I need the layer of the craft paper tape to make this thick enough. Uh, secondly, um, you know, this is gonna be operable, right? We're gonna open and close it. It's, you know, it, I think it needs a little more support along this edge. Um, so to do that, I take my big roll of paper tape, craft paper, and I'm gonna cut off just a fairly decent size. Give me enough to work with here. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is damp that, uh, dampen that. So to do that, I take these kitchen sponges. These are just regular kitchen sponges. You can get them at Walmart or any big box store. Um, but normally they're about yay big and I like to cut them into thirds um, because that gives me a smaller sponge, it's a little bit easier to work with, and it lets me fit the sponges down inside of the boxes. So I'm gonna go get this damp. So it's always good to practice on this stuff a few times to kind of figure out just how damp uh, your sponge needs to be or how wet you need to get this. Um, it really doesn't take very much and you know, I'd, I'd rather mess up on something that's not important, right? So I do all my trial pieces uh, 
on stuff that doesn't matter, just to make sure I've got the right dampness to it and that it'll stick well. So after I've got that wet, I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this down. Um, and my thought and my reason in doing it this way uh, this time is I wanna be able to trim it once. If I cut this out and then I stick it and then I have to trim off the edges, um, I'm, I'm cutting twice. So on this time, I wanted to try to just stick it. As I trim this up, I will be trimming both the original card, or the, the new cardstock and the paper tape on there. Um, and then I can trim back on my end flaps. So I think I've got that pretty well stuck. Uh, nice and smooth, flat on the back. I'm just kind of eyeballing this to start. And then, as you can see, with my little fine scissors here, it lets me follow that edge of that box really, really closely. So, trim there. I'm going to trim right down this end I really like these little shears um, I'll put the link in the description where I got these um, they are really super sharp make really nice clean cuts I think they actually make them for uh, sewing but I find I get a lot of control especially on some of these uh, tighter or closer in pieces um, now I can go ahead and do my test fit on the box and that actually looks pretty good um, yeah, not too bad uh, but just to be sure I actually want to fold this end flap so I can double check it so the first thing I'm going to do is line up the end of my burnishing tools right with where the crease is and that's just on on my skin on the artwork so I'm going to bend it back and then I'm going to bend it the opposite direction following that crease and then I'm going to use the edge of the burnishing tool just to smooth that down and make that final fold so my end flap bent, I should be able to test fit this in the box. And I can already tell that this is maybe a little bit too, too long for that. I'm gonna end up with a bulge if I leave it right, right there. So I may want to bend this a little bit further down. Um, and you can see even when I line the two up this may just be a sizing in my artwork I, I may have got my reproduction just a little bit too big or maybe I fudged a setting when I was doing the, the print so um, may have to call maybe I'll do uh, maybe I will try to use this uh, maybe I'll go back and I'll just print a, another one um, you know when when you're doing the reproductions I don't have, really have much invested in it. Um, so, you know, at this point I could throw this whole thing away, right? It's fairly worthless. Um, and there's no point in doing it if it's not right. So I'm gonna see if I can trim this up a little bit and make it work. Um, if I can't, we'll just print a new one. Next, I wanna tackle this uh, torn end flap here. And to do that, I am gonna try this uh, mending tissue again. Again, because this is all original box, all the bits and pieces are here. Um, it's not completely torn off and I don't need all that extra added support of the craft paper. Um, I'm gonna try it just with the mending tissue. So I've cut a little piece um, and you start just with one of the corners. This is very, very thin um, and I've had a couple goes at this now to kind of learn what some of the best practices are with this. And I think really one of the keys is leaving it on the backing piece as long as you can. 
Um, if you take it off the backing piece, it likes to curl up on itself and uh, will cause you problems. And I think in this case, I'm gonna start on this side of the box um, that's still attached a little bit to position where my end flaps or where my tape is gonna start. So I wanna kind of come through on the back of the box here. You can see I've got a few of these little little tears, these little end flaps, and I wanna kind of get all that pushed down flush before I run the mending tissue over it. And then I'm gonna pull just some of it down. I'm actually gonna work my burnishing tool from this beginning edge back and just slowly come across the box, keeping everything as flat as I can keep it. And then the adhesive that's on this, um, it has a little bit of working time with it. Um, as soon as you put any pressure on it and you do the burnish over the top like I'm doing right now, um, that seems to kind of activate whatever the adhesive is um, and it, it really uh, sticks very, very well to whatever it is that um, you're working on. But prior to that, it, it seems like there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room in it. If you get it stuck to something and you want it removed, um, a little mineral spirits will just counteract or will dissolve whatever that adhesive is on there and it will peel right off. Um, which is another reason, you know, I, I like the paper tape because it was removable. All I gotta do is get this wet and it will come off. Um, and so I, I like this stuff as well, uh, the archival mending tissue, um, because you know, drop a, little, a few drops of mineral spirits on there and that can come off as well. Um, this one I am gonna do a double-sided uh, repair on that. So I'm gonna grab one more piece of my, one more strip of my mending tissue. Um, and this one I do wanna measure out because it's gotta fit inside the box and it is a little bit difficult to trim that off once it's up inside. So I've got it cut to fit. Um, the edges of this are really difficult to get pulled up, as you can see. And I've tried a few different means and methods and none of them seem to be uh, really terribly effective other than just being patient um, and starting slowly with one of those corners like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Peel back kind of an even start to the strip. And I wanna start this on one side where I can line it up with one edge of the box. I wanna make sure I'm fairly straight and square coming across there. And then Peel part of it off, take my burnishing tool over the top and make sure that I'm coming out where I need to. And there we go. So now that we got that set, run my burnishing tool over the top just to activate the adhesive that's in that little strip of mending tissue. It's also kind of uh, Kind of like magic watching that sort of opaque tissue turn transparent as you rub over it. I've got just this little bit here on the end that I'm gonna trim off. And that completes our fix on that end of the box. Now, the last bit I've got is just this wrinkle here that's on the surface. Um, I've pressed it, it still comes back. Um, I think it's just there's, there's memory in the cardboard there. Um, and probably my only solution for that is gonna be some of the paper tape. Um, I wanna be really careful with this because I don't need any more really than just what's on this piece or this surface of the box. So I wanna try to cut a piece of this that's the exact same size as just the face only of the box. I don't want to add any more to this than I need to. So I'm going to start off just by trimming this up and trying to get it 
as square as I possibly can. And I've got a big enough piece. I can always, I always like to say, you know, I can go cut a little bit more off. Um, it's, uh, it's difficult to stretch it out or make more of it grow. So I do uh, line this edge of the tape up with that edge of the box and I fold it over. So that gives me kind of a line that I can follow. Take my burnishing tool real quick over that. So I'll make that nice and crisp. And now I know exactly where to cut. Um, just right on the inside edge of that fold. So there's a pretty good start. Um, I also, since I've got this all mended down here, um, no, I, I don't think I need anything on that end flap. So when I do my test fit here, I'm just gonna run it just past where that crease is. Um, because my only purpose in doing this is really just to reinforce this bend on the face. So I think I'll come out maybe right there to the crease. I think that'll be good right there. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about trimming this because I know I can get in there with these and do it um, after, after I get it in place. So again, I'm just using a damp kitchen sponge um, and practice with this to see how much moisture you need. I feed this in, and I'm, I'm just doing this by feel right now. Um, I don't have anything pressed yet. Let's see here, I wanna pull this down a little bit further. I got a little bit of working time on this. Um, pretty good it looks like it's staying pretty square down to the end of the box so I'm happy with that I'm gonna go ahead and press it I'm gonna use that burnishing tool um, on the inside of the box just to get that paper tape craft paper tape to adhere to everything do the same from this end of the box get that all good and stuck and then come in right here, my little shears. I'm gonna trim off just that very end edge. All that's left to do for this restoration is to fold up our box. As you can see, our reproduction end flap looks pretty good on there. Um, I take our restored Jaguar E-Type, put it back in the box, and our factory end flap. There we have it. This concludes the restoration of our Matchbox Series number 32 E-Type Jaguar. I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in, uh, watching this week's restoration really does mean a lot to me. Uh, don't forget to like this video, comment down below. I promise I do read all of the comments. I wanna know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, other things you'd like to see me tackle in the channel. Um, I do read every comment that comes up uh, and I try to respond to as many as I can. If you got ideas, I wanna try them out. I'm thankful for the feedback that I've gotten from uh, viewers already and some of those things are things that you saw in this video. So. Um, please, please do comment. Uh, and then last but not least, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, click that subscribe button down at the bottom. That lets you stay up to date with everything that we're doing on the channel. Lets you know every time we get a new video that drops. Um, and it helps us build our, our uh, viewer base uh, to know what, what else we can do. Uh, so thanks again for watching this week. Uh, join me next week. Uh, when I do another restoration video on vintage diecast restoration.